this covers T8 and T9 of the National Curriculum. Dr. Ken here with you. So how does this assessment work? Step one, the video will pose a question or a problem. At that point in the video, you pause and attempt the question. You'll have to do the pausing as the student. Step two, continue the video and a hint will be provided. Again, pause the video, complete the question if you need to. Step three, continue the video. We'll give you the answer, but we'll also give you a good explanation of how we got to that particular answer. Step four, nice and simple, continue the video and to, on to the next question. So question one, when a filament fails on a one lamp of a series connected set of Christmas lights, all the lights will do what? A, continue to glow, glow more brightly, go dim, or D, they'll all go out. So have a think about it, often pays to draw a little diagram. So here's the hint. It's all about current that does the work. So what's happening to current? So what is the result? So the answer is they will all go out. And if you did a quick little diagram, let me just draw it for you very quickly. Stick the pen on, lamp one, Lamp two, lamp three. Very rough lamps. And if we have an open circuit, so let's say this one goes open, then there'll be no current. So no current, therefore none of the lights will operate. Remember to get current or to get light to operate, we need a voltage drop across the lamp. And the only way to get a voltage drop across the lamp is to get current through the lamp. But if the current has been open circuited back here, then no current, they all go out. Question two. In the circuit below, if the applied voltage is 20 volts, what is the voltage drop across R2? R2 being 6K. So we've got 2K in series with 6K and carry with series with 7K. So what is the voltage drop across R2 if the total voltage applied is 20 volts? Here's your hint. Uh, hint is Ohm's law, and uh, maybe you need to go about calculating the current first. So here's the answer, and in green I've put the answer in the middle of the thing. It's 8 volts. How do we get to 8 volts? So R total, just turn the screen pointer on is 15k. So that's the 2, the 6 and the 7 added together, 15k. Then I equals the volts divided by the R, so our 20 volts divided by 15 gives me 1.33 odd milliamps in the circuit. So to find the voltage drop across the R2 across the 6k, it's simply a matter of 1.33 milliamps multiplied by 6,000 ohms, and that will come to 8 volts, so A being the correct answer. So I took two steps calculating the total resistance, and then using finding out the current, and using that current, it has to be the current through this circuit, to calculate the voltage drop across R2. Question three, which of these pieces of electrical equipment are typically connected in series? So pause here.
here is your hint. Think about the purpose of each device. Think about what they do and how you apply and use them. So the first answer A, contact uh, coil and a pump. We well, don't put the contact to coil because the coil controls the contact which then operates the pump. So it's not A. Uh, motor and a circuit breaker, so a protective device does go in series with the motor. And two socket outlets, no, they are normally wired in parallel. And two fluoro light fittings, again, would be wired in parallel, not series. So the only possible answer was B. Using the circuit below, calculate the supply voltage and the current. So they've given us 33 ohms, 27 ohms, and 18 ohms, and the voltage across the 18 at 32 volts. So pause here and see if you can answer the question. Here's your hint. I need to calculate uh, the current first, but the current where? So think about where you can actually work out the current. So since we have both the current, we know we need the current, but because it's a series circuit, the current anywhere will do fine. And we can find the current in R3 because we have the resistance of R3 and we have the voltage across R3. So I equals V divided by R, so our 32 divided by 18 ohms tells us we're going to have 1.78 amps in the circuit, and that is I total, of course it's a series circuit, I total. So work out the voltage now, we can work out the voltage across uh, the 27 ohms simply by multiplying 27 by 1.78 telling us that we've got 48 volts then working out the voltage across R1 which is 33 ohms multiplied by R1.78 giving us 58.7 Kirchhoff's voltage law tells us that the voltage total is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3 so we add three voltages together and we end up with our final answer of 138.7 volts. So we're asked to calculate the current, which we did up here, and we eventually worked out the total supply of the applied volts is 138.7 volts. So question five. Four 20 watt lamps are connected in parallel to a 24 volt supply. If the second lamp goes open in the circuit, then what will happen? A, the supply current will drop to zero. <coughs> the supply current will decrease and all other lamps will be unaffected. B, C, the supply current will decrease and the remaining lamp will be dull. Or D, the supply current will increase and the remaining lamps will become brighter. So pause here and have a think. Which one is it? A, B, or C. Okay, here's your hint. Draw the circuit. Draw the circuit out. Okay, here's the answer. The supply current will decrease and the other lamps are unaffected. So let's do a quick little circuit diagram. We've got four lamps all connected in parallel. And I'll just do quick four lamps in parallel. Here they are. Four lamps in parallel. And so the second lamp goes out goes open circuit so this particular lamp goes open circuit so the supply current will decrease 
current will go down because we'll have current here we'll have no current here we'll have current here and we'll have current here so the three currents will add up but not to as much as the fourth current since it's missing so current goes down but the voltage the full voltage is still applied to the other lamps so they remain unaffected so the answer in this case is B Question 6, in relation to the circuit below, the total resistance will be what? So we've got 24 volts, sorry, 24 volt, I'll get it right in a minute, 24 ohms in parallel with 6 ohms, and we have 32 volts across the 6 ohms. So what is the total resistance? Okay, here's your hint. Calculate ohms in parallel. Remember, 1 on R total equals 1 on R1 plus 1 on R2 plus 1 on R3, etc. So the answer is B. It has to be something less than 6 ohms. We've got 24 ohms and we've got 6 ohms in parallel. Will it be more than 24 ohms? No. The basic rule is that whenever you've got resistors in parallel, it has to be less than the smallest value. So the smallest value is 6 ohms, so it has to be somewhere less than 6 when we've paralleled it with the 24. More than 30 ohms? No. About 18? No. So the only possible correct answer was somewhere less than 6 ohms. Which of these pieces of electrical equipment are typically connected in parallel? So we had one where we had equipment connected in series. Now we've got typical equipment connected in parallel. A, control switch with a light. B, thermostat and a heating element. C, two LED downlights on the same circuit. Or D, a circuit breaker and a socket outlet. So pause here while you think about it. Here's your hint. Draw the circuit for each arrangement. Maybe just draw a little circuit diagram. And the only possible answer was two LED downlights on the same circuit. Control circuit switch and a light is a series connection. So we've got a switch and a light at series. A thermostat is a thermal switch often drawn like this in series with a heater element so it's not that one and circuit breaker and an outlet so we have a circuit breaker connected in series with a outlet. There we go. So the answer was had to be C, two LED downlights connected on the same circuit. Question 8. If five 1.5 volt carbon cells are connected in parallel to a 6 ohm resistor, determine the current. So just an Ohm's law problem. So pause here. Here's your hint. Do the Ohm's law calc it. I already gave you a half hint at the front. And the final answer is 250 milliamps because I equals V divided by R. So 1.5 divided by 250 milliamps yeah, sorry, by 6 gives you 250 milliamps so it didn't matter whether we had 3, 4 or 5 it wouldn't matter how many carbon cells we had when they're at, all connected in parallel it's 1.5 volts they're providing 
and so we're going to end up with our 1.5 divided by 6, 250 milliamps. So the 5 in the question was just a little bit of a, a trick, as it were. Question 9. Given the circuit below, determine the equivalent resistance, the supply current, and the power dissipated across R1. So I've got 10 ohms, 5 ohms, and 15 ohms, and 32 volts. So pause here. Here's your hint first. Calculate the parallel equivalent resistance and then work out the currents. So here's the answer. I equals divided by R total. So R total is 1 on 10 plus 1 on 5 plus 1 on 15. Just took my pen on. So we're up to here, giving us a total R of 2.73 ohms. So the current is V divided by R. So our 32 volts, we've got 32 volts across one resistor. So it's 32 volts across everything. So 32 divided by our 2.73. We must be drawing a total current of 11.72 amps. And the total power dissipated, well, I decide to go down the power equals V squared divided by R. So 32 times 32 is 32 squared for our voltage, divided by our 10 gives us 100 and to watts in R1. So we're dividing by 10 because they only ask us for the power here. So we know what the V squared, the V squared divided by R equals the power. Now in this particular case, 102 watts being emanated from R1. So that brings us to the end of DC Practical Assessment Part number 2, Part A.